Hi everybody, this is Chris. Thank you for joining me. In today's video, we're gonna be talking and doing a lot of resin jewelries. And I wanna show you uh, different ways you can embellish and you can put color and uh, choose all the themes you want without a hassle. So first, let me show you a few of the latest uh, resin pieces I have done. And this is just one of them. Let me come closer. I think I'm gonna come I'm going to make the camera come closer. I think it'll be much easier than me moving around. So I'm going to show you one after the other. Well, that was quick. Sorry about that. So this is one of the first one. And this one is rather translucent. So as you can see, I've used um, UV resin. You can use epoxy resin, resin for this technique. It doesn't really matter. Just let me show you something. This one is not completely opaque. I have put the, the paint this way to make it look more interesting and I didn't want it to be completely transparent. Why? Because the design on it, if it's completely transparent, depending on what you're going to wear it on, the color of your shirt or just the color of your skin, is going to denaturate the, um, the design you have on it. And sometimes it can even just disappear. Like if I was putting it here, you can see that if the background wasn't a little bit white, you wouldn't be able to see it at all. And this is even more uh, visible on this one here with also have um, very vintage look flowers. You can of course use any kind of design, but it, this one is completely transparent. I have not put anything on the back, but just take a look at this. Okay, let's pretend that this is my, my skin but it starts to fade away. You can't see that many details. And if I was to put this on a black color, if I had a black t-shirt, it totally disappears. And it's the same thing. If I was gonna use uh, another color, if my t-shirt, let's say this one here. Oh, this one is all yicky, but okay. Your design is completely disappearing. So translucent, completely translucent. Resin pieces are really nice on the when you look at uh, videos. People show you that it's beautiful if you wear a white T-shirt, but it starts to be complicated to wear if it's not white. So I just wanted to show you this so you know before doing it. And if you try it and you said, "Oh gosh, she was right. It's a pin in the back to wear this. I need to have a, a white T-shirt, but I wanted to wear it something else." What you can still do when it's done and it's all cured. You flip it over and you can always put a um, coat of nail varnish or um, also acrylic paint in the color of your choice. I would go for white or a very light pink or blue or green or yellow, but something really light so it's not going to interfere with the colors. Because if you put yellow and it's too bright, because it's going to make the blue turn out green. So if you have leaves like this, everything's going to be green and the pink is going to be orange. So I would go for white. And I've also included here some little um, glass beads. So they're really tiny and I thought I needed something, but you really don't have to do that. That's an option. So that's the completely transparent one. It's really nice like this, but again, okay, see that? It tends to disappear. So this one was just, as I said, a little bit of white. I've done the same process here, just a little tiny bit of white in the background. And I will show you that in a minute. And then I have the same thing on the back, another kind of image. So it's not everywhere. It's not so, um, how could I say, uh, unified, but I really like the effect. On these three, however, I have done a very plain background, white background. This one is not as white. I put less color in. This is a little uh, more translucent, but it's not that much. So you still, you can probably see a little bit my finger here look at the flower. So it's a bit darker when I put my finger, but here it's not going to change anything or probably not that much because it's there is more white, more pigment. And I think that the, the images are crisper, shinier, and they're also much brighter, okay? So I have other examples here. The same thing. That's another, I have used something a little different inside here. These and these are different. I have used something to make, to put in here, something different. They're, non, they're not real flowers at all, okay? No real flowers, but this technique is different than the others. This one is the same technique that I just showed you. I have another one here with flowers. Again, a white background, and here it's using a bluish background. 
but as you can see the flowers also are have a more dull color you can see them but they're not as bright okay so again I think having a white background I would probably put a white background on here because again it's really gonna disappear it's gonna vanish away I will put a uh, probably white nail polish in the background anyway so what did I use to do this? It's very simple. The first thing I have bought was these, ooh, I'm really too close now, sorry. Are these sheets of, they look like acetate, but they're much more um, flimsy, I would say. So with the different designs, I've bought these on Amazon. Uh, they were not that expensive. It was about $5 plus two for shipping. And they come in all these um, sheets. I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to go a very quick overview of what you can find, at least for this one, what you can expect. So there's some skulls in here, maybe for Halloween or something. Uh, you have a just one sheet that is black. I think it might come a little closer so you can see all the designs. Um, they're more like outlines or shadows with trees. You've got more like Christmassy things here and one that would look more like Halloween here and there. That's the one in black. And then you have different things in here. So these are all about dolphins, which are nice. Oh, there's a lot of glare, which are quite nice. Uh, but the colors, as you can see, are all very similar in the bluish and uh, purpley color. There's no really other color standing out. Like there's no really gray except maybe these two, but they're very bluish in real life. Then I have these fish. I think they're kind of better. There's a bit more color, but they all look alike very much. I mean, there's a lot of pinkish color, and the greens are like bluish as well. But they're nice, but they're all quite small, but not bad. I have something else here. So these are also jellyfish, very nice. As you can see, the colors are not bad, but all very similar as, again. And if I, if I say this, it's because of a reason. I'll tell you why here. These are planets and suns. Okay, not too really crazy about these, but anyway. I've got more coil, koi fish, uh, fish here, all very much into the same colors, okay? Except maybe the black. They're not bad. More fish, tropical fish here. Let me put it right side up for you. Not bad, these. And finally, this is more like ge geometrical shapes or uh, what you call also, um, you know, magic numbers and things like that. So here you go. So this is acetate. So you can use this. You cut out your image and I will show you how to use them exactly. You cut out your image and you put it onto your resin and put resin on top and you're good to go. What you can also find on the market are these. So these are even smaller, but this is supposed to be nail art. So actually these are kind of stickers, but you need to put them in the water first and then stick it onto what you want. So normally it would be your nails. So they're really small, but it's perfect for nails because you know your pinky has, is small, so you need to have different designs. And I'm gonna show you very quickly what they look like. So this is more, that's the theme I have chosen and it's about the same price, about $5 and I think I had for free shipping. So this comes in one pack. Tropical leaves, and I've already used this one quite a bit. Flowers in this one in blue colors. More flowers, more tropical with, um, uh, I just forgot the name. Hmm, it's gonna come back anyway. Uh, in here, tropical flowers and birds, hummingbird, toucan, toucan. At least it's the word in French. I think it must be the same one here. Some others there, more flowers. They're not bad at all. They're quite cute actually. Other designs, they're, you don't have two exactly the same. They're all a little bit different. And here you have roses. Okay, so this is one kind of pack, which are really nice, but very small. So, you know, if you're doing a big thing like this, you're gonna need quite a lot in order to fill it up. And you have another type that I also have here, but these are a bit more interesting because they're all, all metallic. So let me try and find one that is bolder so you can really see that. Maybe this one here. 
So you can see that it's it's gold. It's like foil, but it's quite flat. There is no raised areas. It's not three-dimensional, which is also something I quite appreciate here. That's what I was looking for. So I have a, a big pack. There is over 20. I think there are 22 here. Uh, and you have gold and silver. There's much more gold than silver, just to let you know. But the designs are quite interesting. And this is something that you can't really do yourself. Or it would be, maybe, it would take a little longer. So, many designs in here, like this one here that is also in gold. That's also for uh, nail art. You've got this shape. I'm going very quickly here. This one here. Uh, and I have, I mean, a lot more. You've got these little kawaii thing. Can be cute as well. So many more. But I thought, you know what? It's it's really nice. There are things like this kind of elements I can't really do myself, but I thought, hey, this is just plastic. So why can I print things on plastic or acetate? And actually, this is what I have done. And it is really simple. So let me show you one here. I've done several and I'm going to do much more. So this is just one pack that I have done. One sheet. And I've already cut into it pretty much. But look at that. See, and I've done this. You can take go and uh, find pictures on Google. You Google, here I Googled like vintage flowers. And you can't print them out and use them for yourself as long as it's not for a commercial thing or you don't sell it. You can use these images for yourself. And look at them. They're really, really nice. I need to press them down. And I have all kinds of brighter colors that I could expect from the sheets I showed you previously. And what is nice here is that I put all the images under Word and I can resize them. I can change a little bit. I can change the colors. I can make them much smaller or bigger as I need to. And there's no limit to the designs I can have. Look at these. I mean, it's really cute. I can find bouquets. So these are a lot of very vintage looking flowers. And they're quite big. That was my first try. They're a bit big for my molds. But again, I can, I've saved that. I can, and I can make it much smaller if I need to. Uh, this is another one. It's more like bouquets for this one here. And this one there. I mean, it's so easy and do. And this is just done with a uh, inkjet printer. That was not done in anything else. Let me show you another one. It's almost the same as the one before, but with other, I've changed a little bit the colors so they were brighter. See these, these flowers? And they're quite big when you see my hand. But again, I can make them and shrink them or make them really, really big if I needed to. So, you can make this as many as you wish in all the size you want just using printer. And you're not using a lot of ink. And if this is great, I can shrink them down to the size I want. Just let me show you what kind of material I used. These are transparencies. They're covers, actually, and they're transparencies, and they're specifically made for inkjet printers. So, it's they come in a big pack. I have 50 here, and I think it was around maybe three, four bucks. It's probably cheaper where you live. But it's just one brand. Any brand will do as long as if that's what you have, an inkjet printer. And I think usually in color we all have an inkjet printer. Well, this is exactly what you need. Sometimes they can do both, but it's perfect. So you will see there's kind of a rough side on it. You print on the rough side and there's a very smooth and slick other side. This is not to print on, of course, because your ink will never grab on it. And because our ink is... Uh, I think it's made of water, the inks that we have in our inkjet. It, it really bonds very well. There's no bad interaction with resin. It's not going to leak or it's not going to fade out. It's not going to... It, it's perfect. It just stays as it is. So now we're going to try... Oh, I'll try. I already know what's going to do. But I'm going to show you how easy it is to use them. So I'm going to get a mold. These molds are pretty old. I think I'm going to use this one here and clean that one up a little bit. I don't know why. I have an issue with the white that I have ordered online. I have ordered this white on AliExpress. This is supposed to be for UV resin, but it seems like I can't really cure it 
on the back side of it. So I think I should go back with um, one of my favorite inks for UV resin. It's a pinata color. It can also be any kind of alco alcoholic Ashley inks like Rangers or things like that will do. But I, I didn't have white and I wanted to get to give it a try so I bought white and it's too opaque with the UV resin. It doesn't cure that well. So I'm a bit disappointed. Anyway, just to, wanted to share this with you. If you have a link where I can find uh, like AliExpress that they're not too expensive and good colors that would cure perfectly even though it's opaque for UV resin, I'll take it. I will be really interesting. interested. Now that we're at it, what I'm going to do here is cut out some flowers and I'm going to show you one example very quickly. So first what I like to do, and again I'm not going to use a pure transparent one because uh, you don't see much. What I like to do, and I'm going to show you how I did this one if you're interested in but it's really easy. I like the fact that it's not uh, opaque everywhere. I usually like to use these kinds of little um, silicone cups because they are reusable over and over again and it's better to use this than using plastic cups that you throw away and you buy another one and there's more, there more waste. But here I'm going to work directly into my mold. So let me come a little closer. All right, and I'll be doing more and something a little different next time. So I'm going to put, a, which one am I going to use? I think I'm going to use, yeah, there's a smaller one. I have another idea for the bigger. And by the way, please, there's something really important about UV resin. This brand, I bought it on Amazon. You have the same on AliExpress. It is very important for you to know that most of the resins, I'm not going to say every and each of, uh, of the resins, but they're usually toxic. So it is very important that you wear gloves and you wear a mask. But I'm not talking about these masks. This is not useful. Let me go backwards. I mean, zoom out. The, I have three of them here because I'm, I'm still waiting for my respirator. So these masks are good for something that is like dust but it's not good for resin. You need a real respirator, the one when you have, you have to put some filters, you have two filters on each side of your nose. That is what you should buy and it's really important for resin, whether it's UV resin or if it's epoxy resin, unless maybe they say it's, uh, it's non-toxic, and less than that, and even that, I would still buy what? It's probably like around, I mean a very good brand, I think it would be maybe about 30 or 40 dollars um, but I would absolutely buy that it's important and make sure it's made for resin like for toxic fumes or things like that it's really important that you have the right materials because you need to protect your lungs okay and protect your fingers as well so I'm just going to use that because right now that's the only thing I have and I wanted to share this with you I hope I'm going to receive my mask very soon. And then you need to buy, of course, the, uh, the changeable filters every so often. Depending on the brand, they will tell you every, every so, every 10 hours, 20 hours, you need to change the filters and buy the filters. They're not as expensive, of course, but you need to have these as well. Okay, that was very important, so I'm going to put that on my face just a little bit. I hope you'll still be able to hear me. I have again put my resin in here. I think I need a little bit more. Oh, something really important as well that you need to know. Never use UV resin and I would say more specifically UV resin but I would say any kind of resin, even epoxy resin, in front of a window where the sun comes directly because this is UV. It reacts to UV light and of course suns has UV light. So it's going to cure on you while you're working. So if you want to use and it's and for the other resins it might tend it's going to tend to make them go yellow very quickly much quicker than it would do normally. So do this in a well, well ventilated area or place but also not in front of direct sunlight. Very important. Second very uh, important thing is that I'm using a white light white bulb 
to make my videos look sharper and have a lot of light, okay? But this light, however, it's new bulbs that we have here in Europe, or at least in France, we have no choice anymore. And a lot of scientists don't agree by, in the fact that they're good or not for our health, but we have no other way of buying anything else anyway. But apparently there's something with that bulb because it also cures my UV resin much quicker. So it does have UV light going through. There is no filter. There is a little bit of UV light coming because it cures my uh, UV resin very quickly. So when you use it, every time you're going to see me, when I'm done pouring, I will immediately put the cap on back. I'm maybe not going to twist it and shut it close, but I will put the lid on back very quickly because this bottle is going to be directly under my light and it's going to cure the UV, the UV resin by the little hole. Even that, I've noticed that. So then I have to throw away the bottle because everything went hard after a certain time. So this is something and some issues I wanted you to know about. So if you had this kind of problem, you know where it's coming from. It's not your fault. It's just maybe your light bulb. Okay, sorry about that, but I think it was really important to share all this information with you. So I have put a little bit of that resin in here. I think I need just a little bit more. And now I'm going to add my white coloring. So I only have that one yet. Oh, this one available, so I'm going to use it. And I'm just going to put one, maybe just two drops in there, not more. I'm going to mix this a little bit. I can see there's something in there I shouldn't have. Okay, and I'm kind of, you know, pushing and pulling the, the coloring wherever I want to. There's no specific pattern here. I'm not even sure you'll be able to see this. Maybe I should use another color underneath. Let's see. Yeah, that's much better. So you see, I've just put two drops, not much. And I'm kind of pulling and pushing the color where I want the color to be. Don't forget the edges. So there is a little bit of color in the background. It's not completely white, but it's still not completely transparent. I might use a little bit more because I think it might be a bit too light. So just one more drop. I'd rather have it more opaque than transparent. And I think I'm going to call this good. And I like the look of it anyway. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this two minutes under my UV lamp and I'll be back when it's cured. All right, so now what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to use these. So these um, are used, these stickers, you can only use them really if you put them into water. So when you receive them, they come with a little plastic on top. So it is really important that you remove the plastic, the, the transparent one, before putting them into water. So I have a little um, bottle of water here where I already put some. If you don't do that, what's going to happen is that this picture is going to um, stick to the plastic and you won't be able to remove it afterwards. I've tried, it doesn't work. So what you can do, it, it really depends on how many you're going to use. You can take the whole piece there of the whole sheet away or you can cut your pieces and take the sticker out every time. But you really need to make sure that the first layer, the transparency, goes off because it won't work. So I already went ahead and I dipped some of these into my bucket of water here, the mini one, and it needs to be in the water between 10, 20 seconds, maybe 30. This is just tap water. Uh, it's not specifically cold or hot. It's just regular water. So that's in here. So some pieces might sink onto the bottom. Some of them may float. It's not important. And at the same time, what I have done is that I went ahead and I cut out a sticker. This one is not really a sticker. It's from one of the sheets I have printed out. 
So we're going to match the two. So I, I wanted to use this one here, but I'm going to use this one because my image is bigger. So I'm going to put it here and you will see that it's totally possible to mix and match these plastic ones made out of, I told you, glitter um, uh, acetate and um, the other ones here. So what I'm going to do here is first put a little bit of resin. Just a little bit. I want to coat the bottom of my piece where it's all white. And I'm going to spread it around. And if I do that, it's because I want to take all the bubbles away. Because when you're going to put your plastic, there's going to be bubbles in there. And it's better to do it this way to get rid of them. So now that it's there, watch carefully. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to just put it flat. I'm going to put it on an angle. I'm going to do this in the bottom. Let's say that my finger is the bottom of my mold. I'm going to put it like this and slowly taking all the bubbles away and apply it this way. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm coming there. I am with my right hand here pressing it down and then slowly doing this up to the end. And then you will be able to use the light to see if there's any bubbles trapped in there and you just need to push them outwards to the edges and the bubbles will go off. So now I need to put a little bit more here and make sure that your acetate is stuck on the bottom and is not floating. If it's floating, it's because there's a way, there's a there's somewhere a big bubble and it makes it float. I need a little bit more. And again, with the light, honestly, it's maybe not visible here. It's not easy to show you how it really turns out. But with the light, you will see if there's any bubble trapped underneath your acetate. Okay, and as you can see, my colors are not bleeding at all. So you can move it around, you can put it upwards or down, and that's completely up to you. I think I'm gonna leave it like this, it's quite centered. And now I'm gonna add, I'm gonna clean this, and now I am going to add the little uh, stickers here. So I need to push it on the side so you can see what I'm doing. And there's already one that has, not sure you'll see it, but there's one here that has um, separated from the paper. So I'm going to take it like this. I need to put it back in here. I think I'm going to grab it with my, um, with my finger here. And I'll see if I can use my gloves or not. I might have to take my gloves away. Yeah, I think so. Okay, I, it's not bad. I'm going to take um, these tweezers, grab it. There it is. It's really tiny. I think I might come a little closer. And I'm going to put this somewhere here on top. First, what I'm going to do is try to take most of the water off. Because water and um, resin really don't like each other. And it's stuck to my... Let me take this away. There you go. And then you're going to move it around wherever you want. Be very delicate to make sure that you're not going to tear it apart. But usually it's not bad. And I think I'm going to work without my gloves because it tends to stick to the gloves and not to your fingers. Because there's only one color in here and I wanted to spice it up, this is why I am putting these flowers on top. And it's just also to show you that you can mix and match. It's not an issue at all. So I'm going to take another one here. I'm going to push that aside just for a while. I'm going to take the paper. Okay. You're going to put your finger there and you're going to slide it. You see I'm just sliding it on the side and grabbing it with my fingers. Then I'm going to take my tweezers, 
Grab it on one side. Take a little napkin, paper napkin. Take the water off and put it in there. And there you go. Make sure also when you're doing this that you take all the bubbles away. And I'm pressing it down. I guess I have some bubbles. It tends to float a little bit, but it doesn't float a very long time. And I'm going to repeat this several times until I'm happy with my uh, design. I'm sorry I was a little bit off camera here. I'm going to do it again. Let me show you this one more time. I'm going to slide it onto my finger. It's just there. I know you can barely see it, but it's just there. Grab it with the, the tweezers. Take the excess water off. It's not sticking. And then I'm going to put it where I want to. And I like to work with two tools. I need a little bit more resin here. So you need to take your time with it, but it really works fine. So you can see I'm completely um, changing my actual design to something I want. I'm going to grab one more. Put it here. There you go. And I'm going to keep on doing this until I'm happy with my design. to me and I'll be back in uh, in about two minutes okay so now that it's still curing I'm gonna go on with this one only using these little babies and even though they look absolutely great it's gonna take maybe a little bit more time to put them together because you're going to have to imagine the scenery just the way I did it I composed it all because all the elements here come separated so you really need to um, just imagine the way you want it. My bird is a little bit too much on the top edge there, but you know, it was the first time I was using these things, so you might need a little bit of practice. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna cut all the pieces I want, I'm gonna put them in water, and now I'll be back to show you how you can compose your different elements. All right, this is take number two. I'm sorry, but I was completely out of camera and I have to redo this pendant. So actually, because I don't have enough of the images I used in my um, other shooting, I'm gonna use other images. So this is why it will look a little different from the end of the video, but I have to redo it so I'm in focus and you can see all the steps that I'm doing. So actually, I'm going to fast forward these steps because you already understood how to take the image images of uh, of the paper. 
so you don't need to see me that uh, doing that so I'm just going to put all the pieces together just to show you how you can use all these little images images and put them into one big image and actually you're going to construct your own scenery so let's go straight to it and follow along with a little bit of music call it good. I have put some little beads in here because I wanted to mm, fill up a little bit the blanks. I'm going to push them on the side so they're not all at the same place. So this part is really optional. You don't have to put micro beads in here. It's just me that I I just wanted, I, I feel like I wanted to do a little something. Okay. So now I'm going to call it good. I'm going to verify that there are no air bubbles. One more of this. And I'm going to put it two minutes under the UV lamp. And then we're going to be able to unmold it. All right, now it's unmolding time. So first, let me check if it's really well cured. Yep, as you can see here. So let's do it. And there you go. I have a little bit, I'm sorry, I'm much too close. There is a little bit of trimming and sanding I need to do on this side. But look at this. It's absolutely gorgeous. That's, oh, I had a bubble in the back. Okay, so you know when you have something like this, what you can do is you can take a pokey tool and go in here, take that piece off, and put a little bit of more uh, white resin on the back and you will not see this anymore. It's just an air bubble, I think, that got trapped in here. But nothing to worry about. What I really like is what it looks like right now. Look at this. I will probably put another coat on it to make a little bit domey, but I really, really like the look of it, and it's absolutely gorgeous. So that's the way you put all the pieces together. With small images, you're gonna make a big one. So you can do this and load it with pictures, with images. It's really up to you what you want to do. And most of all, really take your time to do this. Maybe do it on a piece of paper first to make sure that you like the way it looks, and then take a picture and do it into your, um, into your mold. That's, I think, the best way to do it. So you have plenty of time, you're not, because it really sticks to resin. So once you put it down there, it's really hard to take it away, even though you haven't put resin on top, but it sticks to cured resin. So first, again, do it on a piece of paper, uh, arrange all your pieces together, take a picture, and then put it onto your resin. That's my advice, and it will take a lot of headaches away. So now let's go back to the regular video that I've done previously. All right, I'm back. Everything has cured. I will probably do a little bit of sanding, but I'll do that off camera because it's really not interesting. And I'm gonna show you all of them uh, individually to see how it turned out. Uh, so I hope there will not be too much glare, but I really wanna have enough light so you can see. So I'm gonna zoom in. Whoa, this is fast, but anyway, okay, let's go. Sorry about that. So that's one of them. That's the one I have done first. If, uh, if you remember. And this is the one I have done with you. It's about the same, but 
a little different. It's just to show you how you can compose your own scenery with the little um, the little images, if you wish. The ones that you put into water, it's so personal that no one is gonna do the same. So this is something really interesting. Then I have two other ones. These I probably, I did this one probably off camera, but it's another way how to use this kind of, um, I think it's more like a pendant than an earring. It could be, I think it's probably a bit too big. It's not that heavy, but it's a bit big. And again, I use two images there, two of these, and I put another one there. So in three little images, you've got a really nice um, pendant. This is another one. I wonder if I did that with you or not. I can't remember. I did so many. Uh, I really love it. It's really nice. Uh, I did put a little bit of glitter here and there. Not too much because I don't want to um, distract the intention, but I think it's really nice. These are the two others that I made. And they really look great. So this one, if you remember, it's half, I've done two. I think that this is the one I did with you, actually. So the main part, the greenery with the yellow part is what we have done together. Um, and that was one whole piece. And the little flowers from the one that you put in the water, the same for the, the butterfly. And it turned out great. I didn't put anything in the background. I just want to leave it plain so that they don't all look the same. So these are the others. So again, the background looks like this the other side which are really nice is also an option this one is really nice as well they're light colors but i think you can still still see them very well they look great again i haven't put more in the background uh what else i think i showed you that in the beginning so that would be on white i think it's really nice and i think it's it i've done them all so and these two that, the one I showed you, I had done previously. I think it's beautiful with this rose. And I will do more in basils this time and maybe do some kind of water sceneries with um, with fish or things like that. I'm going to cop to print them so I'll have them the exact side I, uh, size I need. But I wanted to show you that there are many options if you don't know how to paint or draw because it's hard. You could paint on... Uh, if you are, if you have your skills, you could paint on the first layer when it's white. You could paint hand painted, but with acrylic paint. But it's it's really small. It's not easy, and not everybody paints. So this is a great option. These little stickers are not expensive at all. These are the ones again that you take that piece off, put in the water for maybe ten seconds, and you're good to go. Or the other ones that you can buy already printed, or you print your own with just inkjet printers and I think also it's really cost effective so try it out so please if um, this video was useful for you please give me some thumbs up I would really appreciate and comment because commenting also helps channels to grow because it shows that people interact with you so I would really appreciate that and also uh, please subscribe to this channel it's important and click on the bell button to get notified every time I post a new video and also please share on social medias I post regularly on Facebook on um, Instagram less often I should do more but if you want to share your images your pictures your creations please you can do that on Facebook uh, you have all the links below thank you so much take care everybody and see you soon